around. Dad, how did you make this thing? I'll show you. Why are we whispering? It's more dramatic. Shh. I'm way back from Maker Fair this last May. My family and I stopped at an area called Casa de Fruta in the Pacheco Valley. Where my kids had a chance to look for gems and some sluice boxes, and I thought that would make a great project to make for hikes and trips to the river. I'm using some leftover lumber from a previous project to make the frame for the rock sifter. When the pieces cut to size and mocked up, I can see that they're too thick. So I cut them into thinner strips with my bandsaw. This is the steel mesh that I'll be using for the bottom of the sifter. You can find it at any of the big box stores, and it comes in different sizes, so make sure you choose the one based on the size of rock or gem that you're looking for. For this sifter, I want the mesh to be raised from the bottom of the tray. To do that, I'm cutting in a shallow rabbit that the mesh can sit in. All my pieces are cut and ready for assembly. I don't need a lot of glue since the bottom piece and the handles will also help hold the tray together. Just a little glue on the ends and the clamps on the side is enough for right now. While the glue is drying, I can measure the inset to begin cutting the steel mesh. Be careful when handling this, the edges are really sharp and can easily catch on your finger. Ask me how I know. Go ahead. Ask me. Yeah. It hurts. You can cut the mesh pretty easily, but I have some snips that work really well for this gauge of metal. I'm using my staple gun to hold it in place. It might still move around a little, but the mesh is secure enough that it won't pop out. With the screen secure, I can glue on the bottom furring strips that will complete the bottom portion of the tray. One clamp is enough to secure the four pieces. I just have to make sure that it doesn't slide around before the glue dries. The last thing to complete is the handles. I'm using some of the cutoffs from the table saw that are just the right length to span the entire side of the tray. They don't have to be fancy, but I decided to give them just a little bit of shape on the bandsaw. Once I have one side cut, I can use the cutoff to draw the exact same pattern on the other side. The next step is to cut out the center of the handle. I'm using my table saw wrench to rough out the interior dimension of the handle, using my drill press with a four center bit to cut out the two sides of the handle.
Once that's done, I finish the cut on the scroll saw to remove the rest of the material. I could have used a jigsaw to do the same thing, but I didn't think there was enough surface area to clamp and do it safely. Now onto the belt sander to round off the corners, and the handles are ready to glue onto the tray. I don't need a lot of glue here, but I want to make sure that there's a good contact and clamping pressure to hold them in place. Assembly is now complete, and the last thing to do is knock down all the sharp edges, which will also help prevent some chipping and cracking at the corners. And the project is done. This is a real simple project that doesn't require a lot of tools and you can knock it out or even two of them in a single afternoon. After the video, take a moment to check out all the other cool content on this channel and please follow, subscribe and share. Thanks for watching. Mark, what do you think we're going to find? I don't know. Fossils? We don't know yet. A dirt rex. I knew it. We had dinosaurs in our backyard. Woohoo! Let's dig up some more fossils. Yeah!